The story about how the farm got started is kind of interesting. Uh, my great grandfather was born in New York, uh, came west, uh, spent a couple years near Racine, Wisconsin, then moved to this general area, not this particular farm, but this general area. He was there for uh, just a couple years, and then he enlisted in the Army, the 7th Minnesota Regiment, uh, for the Civil War. And he was gone for four years uh, with the war, uh, came back, actually went into a uh, partnership in a lumber yard in Northfield. And after a few years, uh, I guess five, six to be exact, he decided that you know farming was his passion. And his partner actually owned this farm uh, and was not really interested in the farm. So my great grandfather traded his half interest uh, in the lumber business for this farm and enough lumber to build the uh, farmhouse. And that farmhouse still stands today. My brother lives in that house. It was built in 1871. So that's how we came to be here. If I could talk to my great grandfather, I would probably ask him why he picked one of the rockiest farms around, but uh, that's the way it worked out. And then of course it went from my great grandfather to my grandfather in uh, 1899. Uh, then in 1946, uh, my parents bought the farm. And then in 1979, uh, my wife Carol and I and my brother David bought the farm. You know, if you go back to 1871, uh, the original barn held uh, eight cows, four horses. Uh, everybody had a few pigs, a few chickens. They didn't crop the whole farm by any means. There was a lot of pasture. Uh, there was no such thing really as alfalfa, it was clover. Uh, and they raised a little bit of corn, uh, uh, some oats, and wheat. Uh, because uh, Dundas, which is only a few miles uh, south of Northfield, uh, the Archibalds, they were kind of the uh, original milling capital of Minnesota before Minneapolis became the big deal. So local wheat went to uh, Dundas. Dairy cows were here from basically 1871 until December of 2004. In 2004, uh, my brother and I and my wife made a decision that uh, we probably should uh, exit the dairy business. Our son really has no interest in livestock and we'd done all our expansion in the mid 70s and everything was getting to the point need to be replaced and there's really no resale value for uh, 65 cow size equipment anymore. So what do you do? Uh, so we decided to liquidate the dairy and transition to uh, a small beef cow herd. And uh, even as we were, when we were dairymen, uh, we always fed out our own Holstein steers and. After we sold the cows, we started buying baby calves, week old, bottle fed them in hutches to start with and finished them out. And we still do that today. Although we don't bottle feed them, we buy started calves because uh, at our age, standing out in January with a bottle in your hand feeding a calf is not really exciting anymore. Uh, so today we currently raise corn, soybeans, and alfalfa. Uh, we start the alfalfa under uh, an oat nurse crop and make oat hay and then take off the alfalfa after that. What does a centennial and sesquicentennial farm mean? I think it means perseverance to tackle the challenges in the tough times. Uh, you know, I guess you could say that in those tough times, maybe it's a survival mode, but then in the good times you thrive. You know, and, and we've been able to do that, you know. Uh, my grandparents hung on to the farm during the Depression, for example. We've been through some pretty serious droughts, you know, that uh, really was tough financially, but we persevered.